Hello, everyone. Welcome to Cudlow. I'm Larry Cudlow. So my riff's going to come a little later in the show. I do want to step in front of what is a bombshell story uh, from Molly Hemingway's book and additional reports on how Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook really influenced and may have changed the whole election fighting against Donald Trump. Anyway, we're going to begin with Hillary Vaughn on Capitol Hill, and we will go to Molly Hem Hemingway in just a moment. Good afternoon, Hillary. What's cooking? Good afternoon, Larry. Well, Mark Zuckerberg almost spent as much money as the federal government did in 2020 to make sure the presidential election went off without a hitch during the pandemic. The government made avail available $479 million to state and local governments to help them out. Mark Zuckerberg gave $419 million of his own money that he dumped into nonprofits that then put that money in local government election offices. But that is raising a red flag because a review of where that money went says it was used in a way that helped turn out the vote for President Biden in 2020. A new report details how Zuckerberg's cold hard cash could have influenced turnout in key districts. The Foundation for Government Accountability found that in battleground state of Georgia, more money was poured into counties won by Biden than Trump. The dollar difference is huge. 29 million went to Biden won counties in Georgia, about seven bucks spent per registered voter there. Just $2 million went to counties Trump won, less than $2 spent for every voter there. And some researchers are questioning the cash, saying those dollars could have made a big difference in Georgia and Wisconsin, saying this, quote, analysis conducted by our team demonstrates this money significantly increased Joe Biden's vote margin in key swing states. Spending in those states was likely large enough and targeted enough to have shifted them into Biden's column. Now, a Zuckerberg Chan spokeswoman spokesperson says every election office that applied for cash got some money. There were more Republican counties that ultimately got cash than Democratic counties and also said this in a statement. While Mark and Priscilla provided an overall grant to ensure funding was available, they did not participate in the process to determine which jurisdictions received funds. But this has some lawmakers on Capitol Hill asking questions. Senator Rand Paul asking point blank, did Zuckerberg buy the election? And Senator Ron Johnson also wondering if what Mark Zuckerberg did was legal. Larry. Yeah, Hillary, um, just two quickies. From my understanding from reading Molly Hemingway's work and also uh, her colleague, uh, William Doyle, that it wasn't so much whether it's a Democrat district or a Republican district. They poured money into swing districts and turned them, yeah. you know, helped turn them against uh, Trump and for Biden. When you look at the money and where the money went, that is the key. You can make that case in, you know, certain counties in Georgia, certain counties in Wisconsin, Pennsylvania. But another part of this story um, that is really unraveling, Larry, is about where that money had to go. A lot of these election officials spent this money to uh, get voter turnout, but also promote universal mail in ballot mm. mail in ballots and also go door to door and help, you know, people get those ballots turned in. And so there's a lot of questions from Republicans who wonder uh, whether or not all of that was ethical or partisan, which would make it uh, not OK. Yeah, you bet. Uh, Hillary Vaughn, as always, great stuff. Appreciate it very much. Joining me now is senior editor at The Federalist, Fox News contributor and author of the new book, Rigged, How the Media, Big Tech and the Democrats Seized Our Elections. Uh, we've got Molly Hemingway here. Molly, thanks for coming on. Really, really appreciate it. Um, I just want to begin with it's this. It's great to be here with you. Yeah. You know, I, I read as much as I could read to get ready for this. Um, maybe not all of it. But I want to say here's an excerpt from the book. And I'm quoting, it's almost impossible to find conclusive evidence of election fraud, particularly after ballots are counted. But that didn't mean the election had been conducted without widespread interference. And Molly, I guess um, with the Zuckerberg allegations, I mean, these guys tried to cook it up before it happened. That's the way it looks to me. Help me out, please. Well, and one of the things that I thought was so, I, that was a great report leading up to this, and you were talking about where that money was targeted. It was really targeted toward Democratic cities and counties in swing states. So you see outsized funding in states that end up uh, shifting from Trump 
the Trump column in 2016 to the uh, Biden column in 2020. Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Arizona, Georgia. This was really targeted funding, and it mostly went to, you know, it predominantly goes to these blue counties where they can squeeze votes out by putting these left-wing activists into the governmental election mm -hmm. offices. Mm -hmm. And governmental election offices are not supposed to take sides, but through this disparate funding and through the way that they were targeting Democratic groups uh, with that funding, it ended up making a huge difference in the election. Obviously, you can't have private, you know, you can have tech oligarchs privately funding you. U.S. elections. So a lot of states are making it illegal. Governor DeSantis noted earlier this week that Florida had made the private takeover of government election offices illegal. But at the time it happened, nobody even imagined that such a thing could take place. And yeah. so they were able to kind of walk right in there and have really profound effects. You know, the election came down to 43,000 votes across three states. So a little bit of, of changes in one state or another can have a profound effect on who is president, who's, who controls the Senate, and how Washington, D.C. is run. You know, I love that, first of all, tech oligarch. I just love that. And I just wanted to ask you, have any other names surfaced? Um, your colleague Doyle writing, I'm going to call it a companion article. It, so it certainly supports the book. He, he, called, he referred to elites, plural. And I just wonder who else besides uh, Zucker, Zuckerberg, uh, oligarch Zuckerberg? I think we'll know a lot more about the other oligarchs and bil billionaires who are funding the operation. Mark Zuckerberg kind of went out there publicly, and it was really pitched as if it were this bipartisan or nonpartisan funding. Obviously, that's not true, because these grants were given to counties, and then it went out to a whole slew of left-wing groups that embedded into the system, that handled voter registration, uh, ballot design, ballot translation, ballot harvesting, ballot counting, all sorts of legal issues. And it was all these left wing, you know, far left groups. Uh, they all have ties to the Obama administration or previous Biden, um, you know, Biden ties. And so it was it was not even close whether those groups were neutral. They mm. were all on the left. Um, but there were you know, the whole thing was the establishment doing whatever it took to make sure Donald Trump couldn't get a second term. And so it was kind of all hands on deck. Well, you know, the book deals not just with this issue, but also with how laws were changed in states throughout the country to to make it possible to flood the zone with tens of millions of mail-in ballots going and drop around, the scrutiny that was applied to them. Going around legislatures. In fact, in many cases, not even right, consulting legislatures. Right. So you're supposed to, according to the Constitution, the legislature is in charge of that. Frequently, that didn't happen at all. You would have these Democratic law firms and their allied groups sue a friendly secretary of state and get them to settle and agree to these really profound changes in election laws. And it creates this whole mess, you know, where you don't even know how many votes are outstanding. You don't know who's monitoring the ballots. You don't know if the ballots are being taken care of properly. Just It's just messy. And the messiness is the design. Mm. That's what the Democratic uh, party actually wants to make it so that you can litigate everything and you can challenge everything and you can't really know what's going on. And that's that's the issue going on now is that a lot of citizens are saying, we need to tighten this up. We need mm -hmm. to clean this up. This is no way to run a country. Molly Hemingway, uh, I want to ask you this. I'm just this. Is, I'm going to ask you your opinion, your judgment. As I reading, reading your stuff and thinking about this, I think the arguments you're making that the oligarchs set this election up and bought it ahead of the voting day is a stronger argument. I mean, President Trump is saying there was fraud on election day and the vote counting was wrong. But you're making a different statement here that the, I like to call it bought or influenced, was done ahead of time. And I just wonder whether you've talked to President Trump uh, or suggested that line of reasoning. I don't make suggestions to politicians, but I have talked to him about what happened in 2020. I interviewed him extensively for the book, along with all sorts of other people on the campaign, at the RNC, and otherwise. I think he actually understands these issues. He told me he thought Zuckerberg should be in jail for what he did. And what he meant by that was not just the private funding and takeover of government election offices, but also what big tech oligarchs did to suppress information, to violate the freedom of information that we have as Americans, to know what's going on. You know, it was about controlling algorithms, deplatforming effective conservative voices. These are all 
such important issues and it's it, you know you can't have a free and fair election or an honest election when you can't even know what the issues are mm. in play and because of our media environment and tech environment it's very hard for Americans to actually know you know what's going on what